Hello, and thank you for your interest in our open call for digital innovation hubs and your interest in the Edipner project. Probably by now you have heard that word and concept of a digital innovation hub already various times. And in the next minute, I would like to take the opportunity to explain to you a bit more into detail about what we mean, about what is the concept behind digital innovation hub. Now, as a one sentence summary, a digital innovation hub is a coordinated group of organizations with a complementary expertise and a public benefit objective, offering a set of services and activities to companies to support their digital transformation and innovation through a one stop shop. That's a long sentence and it contains lots of information. And the next minute, I'm going to explain you a bit more into detail about what we mean when we speak about group of organizations, about what is the complementary expertise we're looking out for, what is the public benefit objective, and what are the set of services and activities um, that should be or that will be offered to companies. Now, let us start off first with the group of organizations. So a digital innovation hub consists of two or more organizations teaming up together and forming the core of a digital innovation hub. Now, why do we say it should be two or more organizations? So on the one hand, as you will see later on, we believe that there is no single organization that can cover all of the expertise areas and set of services that we are looking out for. And second, we know that innovation ecosystems emerge through the collaboration of various actors, and we want to foster this collaboration, this collaborative spirit already at this level. So that's why we are looking out for two or more organizations teaming up together and forming this core of a digital innovation hub. Now, the way that you can best think about it is that these core entities serve as the orchestrators of their local innovation ecosystem. So they should have a very good knowledge about what are the actors in the, um, in the innovation ecosystem, and they should possess the credibility to mobilize those actors if a certain service request comes in from a company that they can mobilize and pull in together the different resources from the local innovation ecosystem to deliver this service. Now, the services of a digital innovation hub, they can be delivered, first of all, obviously, in that local economy, on a national level, on a regional level, on a pan-African level, or even on a global level. However, it should always draw its resources and the strengths from the local innovation ecosystem, because the main purpose of a digital innovation hub is to strengthen the local innovation ecosystem and to support the local economy in its digital transformation. Now, what, is, what are the um, areas of expertise that we are looking out for? There are four areas. So on the one hand, the Digital Innovation Hub should have a very solid foundation in our expertise in technology. There is no requirement as to what the technology is. So it could be artificial intelligence, it could be drones, it could be blockchain, VR, AR, just to name the usual culprits. But it could also be mobile broadband technologies or, or something else. So again, there is no restriction. Just it is important that there is this technology expertise within the ecosystem and within the Digital Innovation Hub. Now, technologies can always be used in lots of different areas. So there should be an entity that brings in a specific application area knowledge and expertise in there. So if, for example, you have someone that has technology expertise in drones, if you team that up with someone who has an expertise in applying spraying services, all of a sudden you get an interesting mixture of those two expertise areas. And then last, lastly, from a subject matter point of view, you need someone that brings in the sectoral point of view, who can put the technology and the application area into the larger picture, into the value chains, knowing about the actors and the regulations in that space. Now, we also know that um, digital te technologies always come with a price tag, be that for hardware, software licenses. Um, but there also needs to be this expertise in being able to broker financial services. So the Digital Innovation Hub could provide the service themselves, or they alternatively, they need to know what are the available options in my local innovation ecosystem and have the expertise in directing or opening up those avenues um, to the financing options. What is the public benefit? Public benefit objective here says that 
um, it is okay through the operations of a digital innovation hub to make a bit of profit. However, it shouldn't be the primary objective because the primary object objective is the public benefit. And a public benefit in this sense is strengthening your local innovation ecosystem and supporting your local economy in this digital transformation. So this is the forefront. If through this operation you are fully financially self-sustainable, perfect. If you make a bit of profit, that's also okay, as long as it's not the primary objective. But in that sense, we are also able to include private sector actors into the operations of a digital innovation hub. Now, what are the set of services that a digital innovation app should cover? And there's basically four service areas. So the first one that I always uh, like to start with, even though they don't have a sequential order, but it's test before invest. So this means that companies should be able to try out a certain digital, digital technology before they invest in them. So think about this as providing a means to a company to determine if there is a positive return of investment in there. There is no um, requirement in terms of how to do this test before invest. There is a, a, a wide range of possible options. It could be access to um, experimentation facilities, access to hardware, access to devices that are needed, but it could also be access to test data, to simulation data, or it can even go as far as providing access to test users to validate a certain product or value proposition. Now, after a company has validated the benefit of a technology, then comes the investment part in it. And there we have the second area, access to finance. As we have said before, usually there was a price tag with digital technologies. Now, the Digital Innovation Hub should be able to support the companies in finding the appropriate and best financing instrument for that investment of the digital technology. And again, there is no requirement as what that financial instruments are. It could be very formal ones, such as credits and loans. It could be investment options, impact investors, equity investment. But it could be also be informal types of financing, such as a crowdfunding campaign or diaspora funding. So again, no restriction here. The Digital Innovation Hub just needs to know what are the possible and the available um, um, instruments in my local innovation ecosystem. So after the company has validated the benefits and secured the investments, they need someone to operate that technology. And this is where the third area, skills and development, um, kicks in. So this is meant to equip companies and the, uh, and the employees of the companies with the necessary digital skills to operate the technologies. Now, this could be basically basic digital literacy skills, or it could be advanced skills, such as, for example, a drone piloting course or things like that. So again, there is no restriction. It's just basically meant to provide the workforce with the required skills to actually deploy and operate and use the digital technologies. And lastly, we have the ecosystem building as a fourth service area, which is inherently um, done. If you do all of the other three things, there is already that ecosystem building because you will join together various actors and get them to collaborate and work with each other. But we are also seeing other things such as, you know, hosting regular events, networking opportunities. If academic institutions are involved, we see sometimes that they sponsor PhD or postdoc or um, uh, master students to a digital innovation hub so they could start working on real life projects, increase their employability, or maybe even do spin offs afterwards. And therefore, you know, building up that ecosystem. So there was again various shapes and forms. Important point here is that a digital innovation hub should be able to deliver these four set of services. Either they do that really direct, directly by themselves, by the constitution of the partners that have teamed up together, or they know who in the local innovation ecosystem they can involve to cover these um, set of services. Now, lastly, what is a target group? So we, are, we, we strongly recommend focusing and small and medium-sized enterprises at the main clients for a digital innovation hub. We don't want to exclude anyone from becoming a client of a digital innovation hub, but small and medium-sized enterprises are probably most in need for the digital transformation. So think about this, for example, in agriculture as being your cooperative, your input seed provider, your logistics companies, your processor, your offtaker. So 
companies that operate already that are established, um, but that they are not yet using digital technologies to the full extent to really fully leverage um, um, on the opportunities um, from digital technologies. And the Digital Innovation Hub is there to support those companies in their adoption and their digital transformation. Um, again, startups do play a very important role in the overall concept, and for sure they can they can use a Digital Innovation Hub to come up with an innovation, uh, innovative product idea or with a new value proposition. However, they are also service providers as part of a Digital Innovation Hub. So if a company requests a service, the core entities for Digital Innovation Hub can mobilize the startup ecosystem to deliver those services and therefore strengthen again the innovation ecosystem here. Mid-caps and multinationals are surely more than welcome to be as well customers, but usually have other means or own means of innovation there. But of course, they can participate in that. So this, in a sense, has been a quick tour de force through the concept of a digital innovation hub. I hope maybe I could clarify a few of your questions in this regard. If not, always feel free to reach out to us or use the uh, community sections on the Open Call website. Thank you so much for your attention, and I'm really looking forward to receiving your um, proposals. Thank you.